Today's topic is the abortion ban that is happening in Texas at six weeks. Also, the bounty that comes with it. I'm Denise. I'm Katie. I've been friends with Katie for over 20 years. I cannot believe it's been 20 years. This is 88 Chat. Where we talk about a really random brand. advisory disclaimer this is just our opinion please don't take it back don't send hate to anybody we want to love everybody welcome back everybody i'm not gonna lie i am a democrat i am pro-choice i believe in people's right to choose what they want to do because i'm not in that situation i'm not them i don't know what they're going through and it's getting abortion is never an easy choice. I am absolutely pro-choice. There is factual evidence of cases in other countries when abortion is illegal that women are unfairly punished. So if you have a miscarriage, it can be qualified as an abortion and women end up spending the rest of their life in prison for having an accidental miscarriage that they did not want to happen. So it puts women, all women then, in the situation that all it takes is somebody to point the finger at you, then you end up in prison for the rest of your life. So if we want to avoid that happening here, we cannot make it illegal. It's too much of a slippery slope. It's a horrible law, especially at six weeks, because a lot of us wouldn't know that we're pregnant by then. I think that it is very important to explain what it means to be six weeks pregnant. If you are six weeks pregnant, that does not mean six weeks after your missed period. That is not what that means. When they count the week's gestation, that is counting from the end of your last previous period. That means that you are four weeks pregnant the first day of when your period should have been. So if you are, quote, six weeks pregnant, you would only be two weeks late. That is all. And it's very important that people understand that because it is absolutely ridiculous for any man who does not menstruate to cast judgment upon a menstruating person for quote unquote not understanding their bodies or whatever ridiculous concepts that they have. Irregular periods are so much more common than people acknowledge. And even the definition of a regular period has a window of space where you could be, say, 26-day cycle to 29 days. That's a pretty big gap of just natural rhythm adjustment in your body. Also, many other health problems could cause this. An eating disorder, anxiety and depression, hormone uh, or thyroid illnesses. I can't list them all. There's so many things. There's a lot of reason why we miss a period. So it's just beyond, beyond toxic to cast judgment and blame the person who was in that situation. We already go through enough, especially when it comes to pain and suffering. You want to put us through more pain? I don't think so. We don't want that. Okay, we have enough as it is. So stop doing that. The, I think it's Try Guys or something like that, or BuzzFeed did this little tiny experiment where they had a couple guys had their periods. They did this little pouch. They only had to do for two to three days. And almost I think every single day, they overflowed. The Try Guys also have another excellent video, which I think all men should experience this as well, especially on the topic of whether or not they are pro-birth. 
where the Try Guys experience labor. I have experienced a fully natural birth after a 25-hour labor, so I feel pretty qualified in that experience. If you are going to fight that hard to say that every every woman who is pregnant should have to experience labor, then you should have to know what you're talking about and experience it for yourself as well. There was also, for Try Guys, there's also another video because they didn't only go into labor, they went into the last few months of pregnancy where you have that really big round stomach and that extra weight that's on your body. So we will definitely be linking those um, videos <laughs> for people to check out on their own. I highly recommend it. So please do link that below. Just good try, guys. You're awesome. Shout out to them because of doing these experiments. A lot of women who get abortions historically are women who already have children. So if you are someone who is quote unquote pro-life, you should be worrying about the lives of all those multiple children whose mother you are now taking away and carting off to jail because she was more worried about the children she's already trying to take care of. I think we should start. Let's yes. call it what it is. It's pro-birth, not pro-life because they're not supporting the things to help support life. So therefore, I think we should just say call them if you're pro-birth. A group that is fighting against this abortion ban is the Satanic Temple which is a non-theistic religious organization that is using the Religious Freedom Restoration Act as a means to fight the ban. The Texas Religious Freedom Restoration Act bans government from infringing upon a person's religious rights. So the Satanic Temple is claiming that they have an abortion ritual, which is part of their religion, meaning that they cannot have their right to abortion infringed upon under this religious act. The saying goes, hell has no fairy, like a woman scorned. And boy, have we been scorned. <laughs> yeah. And more than likely, there's going to be a bunch of different legal challenges that can be sustainable to, to block it. And I know a lot of people are disappointed in the Supreme Court justice for not blocking it during an emergency block. But I do understand their reasoning just because you need to understand the arguments of both sides. And it takes longer to do so. So it's going to be really interesting to see because there's so many legal challenges to it and most of those legal challenges are valid i think it's disgusting i think governor abbott shot himself in the foot the question is will that be enough to beat him i don't know how many times have we seen the downfall of politicians when the women come forward and say i was his mistress and he made me get an abortion and here's the, my evidence We've seen multiple politicians fall down because of it. And I'm surprised no one has looked into Governor Abbott's closet. There's no politician that doesn't have a skeleton in the closet. Abortion bans come down to classism. It is a ban for the poor because the rich will always find a way around it and get it done anyways. It's called hypocrisy. You can't say one thing and do another. Some businesses are leaving Texas, yes. But some of them are staying there because of tax benefits, sadly. As we know, lobbyists pay a lot of money to politicians. And lobbyists are lobbying for our companies. And if politicians can't get their money, they go to the exact opposite side. I'm going to go to Game of Thrones here. I remember the scene. Uh, Cersei says, one way about the Golden Company. If they don't support me, I don't pay them back they will support my enemies and fund them because either way they get their gold they're staying there but they don't support it because they don't want to hurt their bottom line they're still getting money and they're getting tax break but what they do is they hold that money and fund somebody else to do what they want them to do we also saw during the election texas became very very close to be turning blue actually it turned purple. You can see that it's shifting. Florida is red. I don't know why people 
call it purple when it's not purple. Florida is bloody red. I know we just went off topic there. It's a horrible situation. And like Florida, I'm going to avoid that state as much as possible. A lot of other states are taking advantage of this. They're like, move out of Texas, move over here. We support your choice. Do I think Roe versus Wade is dead in the ground? No, I do not. So that's one of the things that I don't think Governor Abbott saw coming was the huge amount of support from both sides to get rid of this ban. You know, I really do hope that this ban gets blocked and shut down. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, our, our justice system is very slow right now. And they're really backed up. So please don't yell at people who work at the, those offices. It's not their fault. You need to remember that it's going to take time. But as long as you're still vocal, as long as, long as people keep on talking about this subject, then it won't die. And then we can keep on going moving forward. And I urge people to remember to keep on supporting supporting the people who are trying to get rid of this ban and keep on talking about it but do not I repeat do not go violent you just have to remember to do not be violent be vocal not violent be vocal be as loud as you can be because what's more powerful than anything else is people talking and spreading the word violence doesn't solve anything it just causes more violence do you think we should end here or should we go on I think it is a good place to stop because we've made a lot of great points. At this point, we probably would start talking in circles. Thanks for watching this episode of 88 Chat. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Now.